Welcome to class. Today, talking about onions and some other vegetables. So we're actually going to get down and actually chop some things up. I'm going to teach you how to do it the right way. First, you want to take off that uh, nasty piece of skin there, that paper skin, and you're going to take your knife. Your first cut is going to be right through the top of it, a nice, good, solid, clean cut. Then, you want to put that over on the flat. From there, you're going to take your knife right through the center of it, bring it back. You want to take one half and you're going to peel it just like this. Start from a corner. See how easy that is? Bam. Let's do it one more time. Uh huh. See? And if they mess up on you, just like look. Grab a layer, peel a whole layer out. It's an onion. They got layers. They'll survive. It'll all be good. And remember, keep your board clean. So, first onion, we're going to take this half right here. And we're going to take this piece off. This is the root piece. This root piece, this is what makes you cry. That's why it's the last thing you want to take off before you get started. Now, we're going to go from here, uh, slices coming this way. So, fingers here, knife here. You want your knife to go along this portion of your finger. Not here, you'll take your fingers off. You want your knife to guide along that knuckle. You see that? First one down, finger over, hold it, and then you're just going to continue. From here, you want to turn your, turn your onion. I always start as, at an angle. Wherever this knuckle, this knife is going to be angled there with it. So if I'm here, or even if I'm up here. Either way, it's going to keep that angle and you're not going to hurt yourself. Slide it through. From this point, turn your onion over. There's a reason for this. See how my onion's not falling apart? All the way through. And that is how we dice an onion. Same thing, not different. I'm gonna take this off. And now this one, we're going to have a little bit of fun with. This is a, a julienne onion. You want to simply straight cut all the way through and bring your knife along with your fingers. Without your fingertips getting in the way, keep your fingers curled back. See this? Fingers curled. Always curl them back. That's how you don't cut yourself. And see? It's a beautiful thing right there. Now we have sliced onions and dice onion. That's cut in class. Let's move on to tomatoes. All right, tomatoes. Got some Roma tomatoes. These are usually a difficult one to cut. And you can actually use all the principles on cutting these to any tomato that you got. So first thing we want to do, take that top off. Spin it around. Take the bottom off. So there's two ways that you could do this, and I'm going to show you both. One of my favorites is just like this. You want to cut into this side. Flatten out that tomato and just slice it right across. Keep your fingers out of the way, cross them over. And look at that. Tuck the whole entire heart out. Pound it up on the on the board a little bit, knock all them seeds out. Look at that. Whole tomato piece ready to go. We're gonna slice that up here in a second. Alright, same thing. Over the top over the bottom. Now the other way you want to do this is by going right through the center of your tomato. Okay? Then through there. In other words, quarter it! And then after you have your quarters, then you want to come through with your knife and clean those parts up real nice and simple. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. And that gets you some good tomato. That's going to be good for julienning. There's also other ways to do this. It's actually another segment that I'm going to get into down the road, 101 ways to cook an egg. Where we're actually going to just sit back and talk about 101 ways to do multiple things. Alright, now let's get into this dicing portion. Go ahead, look at this. You could actually flatten the whole tomato out, bring your knife right across it to clean all this stuff up. If you want to keep this, keep it. Dice it up. It's 
part of the tomato. So, let's get into class. From here, again, fingers, knife, knife, knuckle. This knuckle right, see this knuckle right here? This one? That's where you want it. Every time. And that is how you do a Julian tomato. Let's move those out of the way. Now, let's dice these bad boys up. You need a little flick to get things off your knife too. Same thing, same rule applies here. The reason why I like doing this for diced is because if you have a whole side of tomato like this and you actually try to dice that up, you're gonna get into a bit of a problem. Trust, tomato's gonna go everywhere. Break it down, it's fine. Have your julienne go about the same size. You see that? Got beautiful little diced tomato. You make some pico or something with that. Let's do this a few more times so you can really see what's going on here. Fingers edged in right. Pull your knife back. Instead of pushing my knife through, I'm now sliding my knife back. There's multiple ways to do this. See that? All the way through. You're cool, huh? And whenever you uh, get comfortable with it, you really just start kind of moving through it. And don't don't get me wrong. This took me years to master and get down of being comfortable with my knife and being able to move as fast as I am. Take your time. Take your time because the last thing you want to do is get cut and then you don't know what's the difference between the blood and the tomato. Let's go on to the next one. All right, guys. Cucumbers up next. No jokes. Nip to tip. <laughs> I'm always cracking jokes. So you want to actually take those tips off just like that. Toss them, throw them away. They're gone. Now, what I like to do is this is where I like to take my peeler. And whoop. This is how you get those really cool. How does a restaurant do that? Honest to God, this is exactly how we do it. Look at that, it's starting to look a little familiar, huh? You wanna take these and eat those away. You could eat that too. So from here, we're gonna do straight slices because off this one whole cucumber, I could actually show you quite a few things off of this, which is gonna be pretty cool. Again, fingers curled, like always. Find a good set spot where you feel comfortable holding on to your vegetable and you wanna just straight through. I mean, look at that. Beautiful cucumbers that go right inside of a salad. I mean, it's a delicious thing. I eat them raw. Now we're gonna get into something a little different. We're gonna slice it right in half. What you actually wanna do is you wanna quarter these out completely into long spears like such. Okay? Move three of your spears out of the way. You wanna take this one, start your knife here, slowly Bring your knife in. You are cutting towards your fingers, so you want to go very slow with this, okay? When you get to a point, you could shift your hand over, shift your hand over so that way you don't cut your fingers. Toss those seeds out of the way, and look at that. Got a cool little spear right there. Let's get the rest of these going. Just like that. Remove those three spears again. Now, I'm gonna do this a couple different ways. Break this in half. And you got some awesome cucumber sticks for kids. I love these. My girls love them to death. A little bit of ranch all day. Then here, this is the one everyone's gonna love. This is for your salads. If you like your cucumber broken down a bit. See how we're simply, see all those even cuts? That's because I have my finger set and curled with my knife on that finger. So I move forward, and as I move forward, you see that move back? See it again? See how things are looking even? 
And if yours aren't even the first time around, it's fine. It's totally fine. It's practice. Practice makes perfect. It always does. So from here, now we're gonna go on what's called a bias. You notice that my vegetable is straight and my knife is angled. You'll actually see it like this and have that angle there. As long as that angle is there, you're gonna be in good shape. And you wanna just go straight through, just like you did with the other ones. And now, you got some really cool pointed sticks there, huh? And then, if you just want tiny dices, cut that again right in half. And you know what? We'll do another one. Just to show you. See that? You can take them right in half. So now I have these two smaller, this one larger, and we just go right through it. Nice and simple. Like I said, practice makes perfect. As long as you practice this, you too can get this. All right? Always respect and always have an understanding that the knife you're using has the potential of cutting off your fingers. I don't say that to scare you. I say that to have you respect the tool for what it is. Your knife is a tool and you have to respect it. So, that's a pretty uh, cool thing to do with cucumbers, huh? Five ways. Ready to see what we do with zucchinis? Onto the zucchini. Boom. All right. I didn't even pause this guy. We're just gonna keep on rolling. Fuck it. So, zucchinis. <laughs> Looks just like a cucumber, but a little more veiny. All of us with our kitchen jokes. We want to take that top off. Spin it around. Take that bottom off, clear them off your knife, throw them away. From here, you want to take this straight down the center, just like that. We're going to put this half away. I'll show you what to do with that one in a minute. So here, we're going to do this two ways. That's why I cut this in half. Back to slicing, just like with the onion and the tomato and the cucumber. Make sure your finger is help guiding and out of the way. Beautiful little moons. Remember that bias cut that we just talked about? We're gonna go back through with that on the bias. And look at this. Get some nice, good, healthy chunks and sizes. Saute these up with some onions, some peppers, maybe some kielbasa, you know what I'm saying? We'll get into that another day. Now here comes the fun part. When you need to dice this, there's multiple ways you can do it. This is the easiest way that I've found it. It's a little time consuming, but it's safe. And again, it's easy. Cut your zucchini in half. Cutting it in half, this smaller piece is a hell of a lot easier to work with than the whole entire thing and trying to turn this whole thing on its side, right? Watch. Now you turn this over to the side, set your palm down onto, onto your board, and hold your vegetable in place with your fingers allowing your finger to guide the knife, keep these fingers behind your points and they will not get cut. And you simply straight down. That's gonna give us a slice like that. If you're comfortable going from here, do it. If not, leave it alone. That's the beautiful thing about it. I've been doing this for a while, so I'm actually comfortable with putting my hands in there and making it happen. You want to stack all three of them right on top. Now back to the julienne. You remember the julienne that we did earlier? That's so we're going to go right back to that. We're going to julienne these. If you have to bring your finger around, like I just did right there, to hold the vegetable, because if you don't, see how the veggie moves with the knife? If you got to hold it, hold it. It's fine. Keep your fingers away from the blade. Ooh, see that? Good. I'm glad that did that. See that shift that it just did right there as I push down? If that shifts on you and it makes you uncomfortable, look at this. You take that piece off and the shifting won't happen. Because, I mean, realistically, what difference is this piece to this piece? Not much, is there? So, why would you cut it down even farther? Doesn't make any sense, right? So now we're going to butt all this in right up next to the knife and make it nice and even with the knife. Fingers curled guiding along the edge of the knife. 
I said end of the knife, not edge of the knife. Okay. The camera up there is watching me look over here at this camera, and I'm looking over at that camera, looking down at this camera. It's kind of a cross reference that we got here, but you're gonna get it. And that is how we do a dice. You know what? We're gonna go over that again. You know what I'm saying? Tip and trick is as you're dicing, angle the knife over and whatever is here or angling up should fall off and give you room to keep working with. I know you saw me do that a couple times. So I'll actually take it on a slow-mo backwards. Nah, I'm just kidding, not slow-mo, but it is gonna go back, you'll see it, and then it's gonna come back to this point right here. Well, ready to learn how to cut a pepper? On the pepper! All right, guys, pepper. This one's actually kind of fun. I really enjoy these. I actually use two different knives for this. That's just how I like to do it. If you want to use one knife, use one knife. Multiple ways of doing this. But what I like to do, take the top off right here, straight through. You could actually either keep this if you want. You could actually break that end piece out of there. That's actually a good pepper to use. So this is where I like to switch my knife up. Grab something like this, and I actually go right around on the inside. See that? Just go right around the inside. Look at that, thing falls right out. Don't got all those extra seeds floating around and everything. You reach in there, pull this stuff out if you want. Or, get your knife out. Right through the center. Now, this is the part where it gets just slightly difficult. Okay, you want to take the bottom piece off. Set that off to the side. From here, if you actually, you can see right here, the split. I'm actually going to use that as a guideline for my, for my cuts. But I'm going to turn my knife now and actually set it flat. And I'm actually pushing pressure onto this to flatten out the pepper. And I'm just gonna angle that back and forth and that takes out that nasty meat piece right there. I'm not a fan of that. If you are, keep it. If not, get rid of it, like me. And then come back the other way. Nice, slow. Don't try to just slice through it because if your hand is here and you try to go through it, this knife is gonna go through your fingers and then it's gonna look something awkwardly and I don't even have the special effects to make that happen. So that's not happening. So that's how you clear that out. Let's do it one more time. Look at that. Now we have some nice good looking even peppers. We're gonna take one of these halves and dice it, and one of them we're gonna do a legitimate julienne. So like I said, you remember I said I was gonna use this as a cut point? Use it as a cut point. Just like the tomatoes, break it down. Make it a little easy for yourself to hold on to. If you're comfortable holding on to the whole thing, do the whole thing. 101 ways to cook an egg. You're gonna hear that a lot out of me. So see that? Nice, simple, right down. Some of you may go, well isn't that julienne? Close, but no cigar. I'll explain that here in a second as we get to it. But to finish off the dicing, butt it up to the knife, fingers curled like always, Nice, beautiful dice. Let's do this two more times just to show you how we're doing it.
That's a beautiful thing. Now, we got our dice. We push that off to the side. Our other half, we're gonna do Julianne. So, Julianne actually has a legitimate size to it. That is actually not the whole length of the pepper. Typically about half the pepper. Then you wanna bring this half here, lay it down with your fingers. If you have to, kinda of do a cool little, you know, throwing up some size. But from here, it's actually a legitimate cut that is even all the way through. This does take time, a lot of practice, a lot of failed moments, but as long as you keep working at it, and as long as you keep practicing and respecting your knife, respecting the vegetables, respecting the food, I mean, those in a salad is amazing. Those in a Philly cheese, absolutely amazing. And these are all things that we're gonna get into all in class. So, again, make sure your fingers are guiding your way, not in the way. Your fingers are guides. Well, it's a beautiful thing. You got your julienne peppers, you got your diced peppers, and you know what? If there's one thing I do like about these more than anything, they're very versatile. I actually like to freeze these. I'll even cut them up just like this and freeze them. When you're ready to use them, pull them out, let them defrost, pat them off with a towel. You'd be completely surprised how well they get their crisp and bite right back up once they get into heat. So, you guys, I hope you really enjoyed cutting class with Chef Nick. I enjoyed doing this with you guys. If you have any questions, comments, like, subscribes, you know what to do. Hit the button. Make sure you're hitting the comments. Ask away. Hey, Chef, how do I do this? Hey, Chef, how do I do that? Never know. I just might make a class for it. Actually, there just might be another class. You never know. I mean, if you go over to the next uh, slide there, just might learn how to cut off some vegetables, maybe some melons. You never know what's coming up next. But thanks for coming over to uh, Cutting Class with Chef Nick. Appreciate you stopping by. I'll see you next time.